So loading in the Ripple data then, so this works exactly as the same way as the previous examples. So what you would need to do is download the data from the Canvas page, save it to a USB stick. Here the USB drive was drive E, and then reading the data using the read.table command, and just make sure that you need to have this file path exactly correct. The ncol command shows it's four columns in this data set. So this means that the price has to be identified with the fourth column. You then need to reverse this in order to have everything in exactly the right chronological order from oldest to newest. And then you need to find the length of the price. Once you've done this, you know that the last observation of the price is the 2385th entry. So what you've got at the bottom then, the log return is calculated as the difference of the log of the price with the first observation excluded minus the log of the price with the last observation excluded. Okay, so the same rhyme, reason and rationale as we've seen before. And you can make sure that you get the read.table command working with the right file path in the first line. Okay, the other step that's easy to miss out is making sure that the data is in chronological order from oldest to newest. So model fitting in T-series in R then, so you need to apply models to the mean corrected log return. So that sounds a little bit of a mouthful, it just means that you need to apply this thing and the GARCH command to the this thing here, the resid variable, which is the log return minus the mean of the log return. And then you would fit arch1 and garch11 models to this data so this would work exactly the same way as the previous example so hopefully you can sort of see here that the way r is set up though these are hard models the actual model fitting shouldn't necessarily be too difficult okay remember again at this point that r is a bit quirky so this has got it the wrong way around so in order to fit the arch1 model what you have to do is apply the function garch to this resid term and then it's order not one so this is the garch order is naught but the arch order is one and then for the garch one one model it's the same garch command now the order is the garch order is one and the arch order is one okay same rhyme rhythm and rationale as you've seen before so the first step is the computational command so perform a calculation call it something sensible and then you've got an explicit summary command so that R actually shows you the results of its calculations. Recall that R is like a robot, it will do exactly what you tell it to do, nothing more, nothing less. So the summary command, this gives you these sets of T statistics for the Arch1 model. And what you can see here is that this term here, the A1 term, is the arch one term this is significant precisely because at the final column this p-value is less than 2 times 10 to the minus 16 so is therefore also less than 0.05 and this recalls uh, what i was trying to say earlier that although the t statistics etc work exactly the same way as the previous regression examples because this arch and garch effect are so ubiquitous within financial price data if you've got the order of the model correct you're almost guaranteed to have these things be highly significant okay and here we have that the arch one term is indeed highly significant precisely because the p-value is much less than 0.05 there's an example there of the hand calculation type uh, exercise in years where people sat an exam rather in as in your case just have an assessment by coursework okay don't go through that too much just to point out my little trick with the inequality signs so if you look at the bottom of the slide you've got the inequality signs pointing the right way if you've done this thing correctly and again the thing is significant p less than 0.05 so you get the equivalent set of results again using this command summary and what we've got here is the a1 term is the arch one term and the B1 term is the GARCH one term. Both of these are significant. So again, what you're likely to find here is if you have a suitably low uh, ARCH or GARCH order, then 
necessarily these terms are going to be highly significant. So for the arch effect term, the A1 term, this is significant precisely because the p-value at the end column is less than 2 times 10 to the minus 16, so is again less than 0.05, and it's accompanied there with three asterisks just to emphasise to the reader that the thing is significant. And then for the Gartz one term, again you've got the p-value at the final column highly significant precisely because the p-value is less than 2 times 10 to the minus 16, again accompanied by three asterisks, so significant evidence for the arch effect and the Gartz effect in this case. Again, I've tried to include here some hand calculation examples for the arch effect and the Gartz effect, not so relevant uh, to you this year because you're going to have a coursework rather than a final written exam at the end. But just to point out again, these inequality signs are pointing the different way if you've got this thing working correctly and both to try and give you another example of experimenting with higher order models. So what you're asked to do here is to fit a GART 7.7 model and summarise the results. So again, R is like a robot. should see that this is working exactly the same way as before here. Tell the thing to do a computational step and save it as something logical and then a summary step so that you recall the results get R to show you the results of the calculations once you explicitly order it to do so. R is like a robot, it'll do exactly what you tell it to do, nothing more, nothing less. And just to sort of point out here that this model doesn't really make sense unless you think carefully about the calendar effects in the question at large. So this GART 7.7 model, what this is intending to do is allow for the possibility that volatility over the last seven days, i.e. the last week, feeds forward and affects today. Okay, and then similar to the situation we had with regression models when you have multicollinearity, you have problems here with numerical instabilities. So the suggestion is that the higher order model doesn't work and contains some redundancies. Okay, so you don't need to account for this possibility that there's a feedback effect from all of the previous seven days. So now I want to sort of go through a Bitcoin example. So we've got price data on Bitcoin from April 29th, 2013 to February 13th, 2020. And again, I wanted to do the following tasks in R. So firstly, I wanted to read in the data. And then if you're going through this yourself, just make sure that you load the package T-series. So if you're working through this and it doesn't seem to be working, it doesn't recognize the command GARCH, then you probably won't have loaded this package T-series. You're asked exactly the same as before to fit low order ARCH1 and GARCH11 terms and to experiment the fitting of a high order GARCH77 model. So I just wanted to repeat here that in each of these three cases, these have a tangible financial meaning in terms of the human calendar. So both the ARCH1 and the GARCH11 models would have the interpretation that volatility from the previous day feeds forward and affects today. And again, this GART 7.7 model, so this is quite a high order model, this would have the interpretation that volatility from the previous week feeds forward and affects today. So we might imagine that there might be some problems with numerical instabilities with the high order GART 7.7 model. You are almost guaranteed to have significant arch and GART effects in the low order ARCH1 and GARCH 1 1 models. So, same rhyme, rhythm, and reason in terms of the R commands to enter in this data. So, the file bitcoindata.txt is available on Canvas. Save this to your USB as a .txt file and again read this data in using the read.table command. You need to make sure that you get this file path exactly correct. So, in my computer, this was drive E, but this might be slightly different for your computer. The ncol Bitcoin data tells you that there's four columns in this data set, so the price needs to be identified with this final fourth column. You then need to reverse this price so that it is listed in chronological order in R from oldest to newest. And then you need to find the length of this price series so that you know what the last observation is. So 
Once you've done that, the log return is then calculated as a log of the price with the first observation deleted minus the log of the price with the last observation here, the 2,482nd observation deleted. Okay, and then the obvious thing to sort of check at this point if you're working through this in your own time on your own computer is that you've actually loaded the package T-series. Okay, so not loading the package T-series is almost on the only thing that could go wrong at this point as long as your computer doesn't burst into flames. So again, then, the model fitting in T-series has the same rhyme rhythm and reason to it in R. You need to apply models to the mean corrected log return. So what we've done here is take the log return minus the mean of it, call it something sensible like resid in this case. And then what we are going to do is firstly fit ARCH1 and GARCH11 models to this data. Now R has unfortunately got everything the wrong way around here. Okay, but this paradoxically makes it easier to remember how the thing works. So for the first one, ARCH1 goes to the GARCH command applied to the series resid and the order of this is the GARCH bit is zero and the, but the ARCH bit is one. And then for the second bit, the GARCH11 term, the way to read this would be the GARCH command applied to the variable resid the order is now the GARCH term 1, the ARCH term 1. And then remember R is like a robot, it will do exactly what you tell it to do, nothing more, nothing less. So the first two lines of this bottom set of R commands is doing a computational command and calling it something logical. And then you need the summary command to actually explicitly ask R to summarize the results of these calculations. Okay, R is like a robot, it will do exactly what you tell it to do, nothing more. So, for the first case, then you get these results here for the T statistics using the command summary. And the thing to watch for here would be the arch effect is the parameter A1. So, the second row here, this is as you might expect, highly significant precisely because the p value is less than 2 times 10 to the minus 16, which is obviously a lot less than p equals 0 0.05 and just to emphasize this i was given this three asterisks so that the reader knows that this thing is significant and this is exactly what you'd expect with a low order model to find that the arch and garch terms are almost always very highly significant when you've got a low order model precisely because these arch and garch effects are so ubiquitous within financial market data and what I've tried to do here is just give you a quick hand calculation for an exam type question. So it's less relevant to you this year because your assessment will be a coursework, not a formal written exam. But just to sort of recap that the T statistic is just the absolute value of the estimate over the estimated standard error. And if you're doing this calculation correctly, what you have is the two inequality signs point in a different way. So precisely because the T value is much bigger than two, the P value is then necessarily less than 0.05. So for the cost effect then, so exactly the same way of working. So the summary command gets R to explicitly show you the results of the computation. And how to read this is in this table of T statistics, the A1 term is the term corresponding to the arch effect and the B1 term is the term corresponding to the GARCH effect and we would expect because these effects are so ubiquitous that these will be highly significant for a low order model such as this and indeed this is the case so for the arch term if you look at the A1 parameter the p-value right at the end column is less than 2 times 10 to the minus 16 so is necessarily less than 0.05, so this is highly significant, as we might anticipate. And then for the GARCH effect, we're looking at the parameter B1, so the p-value right at the end is less than 2 times 10 to the minus 16, which is again less than 0.05, so highly significant. And note that in both cases, you've got three asterisks uh, at the side of the p-value in R, just to emphasize to the reader that these are highly significant. And I've given you again there, a quick hand calculation example for how you would determine the significance of the arch effect 
or the Gartz effect, which would have relevance for the exam, but is less relevant for you because your assessment would just be a primarily computational coursework assignment.